everyone, welcome to my April favourites. Yeah, it's April. Yeah. I'm really groggy today because yesterday was the screening for a film that I'm in called Eric to be the Manual. It's being renamed Frequencies for the American market, but it was basically the screening for it at the BFI last night. And it was a late one. And I'm really tired. I could be filming this right now and I could be sleep talking for all I know. Um, I've got quite a nice eclectic mix for you guys today. A um, bit of fashion, a bit of beauty and a bit of miscellaneous. So let's get started. So the first thing that I have for you is something that I got in a little boutique in a town near where I live and um, the little boutique is called Total Look. It's such a cute boutique. It's filled with like everything that you want to buy. You just want to have it all, seriously. Um, and this is the, one of the things that I picked up recently um, and I actually wore it last night for the screening and it is this floral bomber jacket. Like so. And this, this is, I, I saw, when I saw it I was like, I'm probably gonna buy it however much I tell myself I shouldn't. Um, but my mum was like, yeah, buy it as well. So I um, got the seal of approval from mum. So I wore this last night with a play suit. It has like a cami style top with spaghetti straps and like a slit down the back. And the bottom half is like sequin shorts. But because it wasn't that dressy, I actually put a leather skirt over the top. So it kind of became like a, a cami skirt combination. And then I wore it with um, Chelsea boots. And I wore this over the top as my little colour statement. Um, and it is, I absolutely adore this. Um, it's quite light material, but it still keeps you warm. So a great summer cover up. It's super, super comfy, which was great for watching the film in. I also love the silky material because it really makes it evening worthy instead of just a day jacket, which is really nice. And I love this pattern. The next thing is another jacket. And it's actually one that I mentioned um, in my one of my hauls recently. I think it was my last video. And it's something that I've been wearing so much. And it is my Tommy Hilfiger denim jacket. Like so. Ooh. And I actually got this at a vintage kilo sale that I went to last year. I think it was one of my first blog posts, I think. Um, so, and I've, and I've literally worn this recently so much. Especially with the spotty dress that I had in my haul. And it's just such a great timeless piece, great summer cover up. It's a really nice fitted style, which is great if you're wearing like a fit and flare dress, like the spotty dress. And again, so versatile, you can roll the sleeves up for a more cash look. So you know when you have an item and you bought it a while ago or you got it as a present and you hadn't worn it that much, and then suddenly it comes into fashion, like everyone's wearing it. Well, this is what happened with the, the next item that I have for you. It is these Birkenstock sliders. And I hadn't really worn them that much kind of beforehand. And then everyone, everyone started wearing them to go with like the sole cal surfer trend. And suddenly these little babies were in fashion. Which was nice because I actually quite like these. Um, I like I kind of like the ugly foot trend with like the chunky sole and things like that. I love this massive black strap. You can adjust it, but it's just a, a nice big statement on a sandal, I think. Because you know how sometimes on sandals you have like quite flimsy little straps. Well, this one is kind of like, look at me. I am on your feet. And again, super comfy because the sole is actually made to mimic the sole of your foot. So it has a raised bit for your arch, which is really good because it's not that good to wear like one kind of shoe, like with the sole. For instance, if you're just wearing like ballet flats all the time, then you're, it can really do hell on your arches. So this one is great because it's molded to your foot. Um, so it gives it all the support that it needs. 
Next, the beauty item, and it's actually one that I won in a blog competition, and it is Alien or Extraordinaire by Terry Moogler. I think I say that name right because I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Um, and this is so nice. I wore it constantly for about a week after I got it because I was really obsessed with the scent. Um, and it's, it's just amazing. The bottle is so beautiful. It's got like precious stones at the top. Is that quite art deco, I think? Quite, quite an art deco style to the bottle. The great thing about this is, is that it's refillable. So A, you don't have to throw away this lovely, lovely bottle. And B, it's environmentally friendly. And you basically just take the top off. You can go out, buy a refill, fill it up, you're good to go. But the, the smell, I think, is quite... It's quite, they say it's quite fresh, but I think it's actually quite of an evening smell. It's quite a rich, kind of rich smell. Um, so I, I mean, I've been wearing it, if I've been wearing it in the day, I've only been wearing it like the tiniest amount. What's quite nice is as well, is that when you get the bottle, you also get this little invitation inside. And it kind of creates it more of an experience than just having a bottle of perfume. The next couple of items are in my miscellaneous category. Um, and the first two things are books. And this one, I actually was reading at the same time as I was finishing off Lord of the Rings. Because when I was filming, it was such a massive weight to bring along my Lord of the Rings book because it is literally all the books in one and it weighs a ton. So I just wanted a quick book to read while I was on film sets and things like that and while I was waiting around. And it was this, it was 1984 by George Orwell. And I've been meaning to read it for a long while and I managed to pick it up and I thought, you know what, just do it. Because to me, I was like, oh, that's quite, it's quite, quite a small book. So I'll, you know, I'll get through it okay. Uh, but because I was reading it at the same time as Lord of the Rings, it took me quite a while. So basically, not giving away too much of the story, it's about a man called Winston and he lives in this world where the party and Bigger Brother are like the rulers. And there is things like Newspeak and Double Think and basically there are ways that the party have that they can tell what people are thinking. They're called the Thought Police. So if someone is thinking of like trying to have a like an uprising against the party, then you'll get arrested and things like that. And it's basically about Winston's struggle against the party. At times it's a little bit confusing, um, especially if you go away and leave it for a while and then come back and you're like, what the hell is going on here? Um, but it's, if you really get into it, then it's a really, really classic novel. What's quite interesting about this book is as well, it doesn't treat the reader as a someone who can't think really. It really makes you think because it's a world that we can relate to so much it kind of makes us think oh my god this could happen like tomorrow and this this could this could become real you know so it's a really thought-provoking book. I started on the Millennium Trilogy and this is the first book in the trilogy and it's called The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stig Larsson. I'm really sorry if I got that wrong. Um, but I have I literally read this in about a month and I couldn't not put it down. It's that addictive. Michael Blancvist, I think. And basically this first part of the trilogy is about Michael Blancvist. That's not right. Someone cared to correct me? <laughs> Um, it's about Michael, who is a journalist, and he's been recently been sentenced to prison for a story that he published, um, and people were basically saying that it wasn't true when it actually was. And so, but then he gets contacted by a wealthy industrialist called Henrik Wanger, and he basically wants Michael to help solve the mystery of the disappearance of his granddaughter, Harriet. And the story basically follows Michael as he tries to solve this mystery of what happened to Harriet. And on the way he meets Elizabeth who is a hacker and he employs her as a researcher and it's basically going on about how they solve the mystery. It's extremely well written, it's really intelligent but it's also quite accommodating for people who don't really know about high tech and hacking and about crime terms and things like that and journalism. 
but it still treats them with the same amount of intelligence as someone who would. The next thing is a TV show, and it's Fargo. I don't know if any of you have been watching it, but I absolutely adore it. It's basically about um, a man played by Martin Freeman, and he kills his wife, and he has met this drifter played by Billy Bob Thornton, who is incredible and really creepy. Um, it makes like the hair stand up on your arms and everything. He's He just says the most weirdest stuff with a straight face. Like that, he is just such an incredible actor. Martin Freeman's character, you just want to give him a hug because he just been through so much and you just want to be like, it's okay, it's all right, life will get better. It's nice because you, em you have empathy for the characters, even though he's done a horrible thing. I don't want to spoil the plot too much. It kind of follows both Martin Freeman's character and the police as they kind of go forward after the events that have happened. The incredible thing that the Coen brothers have done with this as well is that there's so much dark humour in it, even with like the violence, it's, it's disgusting, but you find yourself laughing in it, at it. It's not like, oh, hide behind a pillow kind of violence. I can watch it actually. I'm not that good with violence either. I'm more of a CSI violence person, if there's a sort of person for that. But that's kind of my kind of thing where it's not, you, they don't show everything. But they do in this and I'm okay with it. The last thing is something that I have literally been waiting two years for. It's been that long. I have a new phone. <laughs> Life is so much better. I basically had a Blackberry before and it was the bane of my life. It froze like every day. I'm not even exaggerating. Like it's probably still frozen now for all I know or care. But I managed to get an upgrade and I actually got the 4S instead of any of the 5s. Mainly because for my little hands, like the 5S is like massive in it. It's just like, ugh. Um, and also because I, when I teach, I use music and I use my iPod, um, well I'll be using this as well. And with the fives, um, they also have like a tiny little charger socket. Um, and you can't really use that in speakers. Um, but with the four you can, which is that, which is really good because then I can use this if I don't have my iPod or anything. And I now have Instagram as well, which I couldn't get on the Blackberry, which is amazing. Um, so if any of you want to go and follow me, I'm um, Georgie underscore MB. And I, I think that my, that my lock screen is pretty nice. So I think that's it. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments, then comment below. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!